I'm Dennis Galecki. Welcome to the 529th Imagine Greater Buffalo program and our 151st YouTube Imagine Buffalo program hosted by our wonderful Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. Thank you for joining us today. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History and Nature, or Cezanne, as I pronounce the acronym, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Now, before we get started, just a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted and your video turned off. So if you do have a question or a comment, please type it into the chat box and we'll go through them at the end of the presentation. We are recording this program so you can watch it again later on the Downtown Central Library's Facebook page and YouTube channels. And please, we hope you share the link with your friends and neighbors. Now on to our featured speaker. Rita Arjun Arabak is a nationally recognized artist whose award-winning watercolors are represented in numerous museum, corporate, and private collections across the United States. Her paintings are best known as representation of her appreciation for the architectural jewels in Buffalo, New York, Chautauqua Institution, and subjects visited during extensive travel in the United States and abroad. She is motivated by the way light transforms the world around her, whether the subject is architecture, landscape, or still light. Rita twice served as president of the Buffalo Society of Artists, is a founding member of the Niagara Frontier Watercolor Society, and a signature member of the Pennsylvania Watercolor Society. Among other accolades, the Arts Council of Buffalo and Erie County selected her for its Individual Artist Achievement Award in 2009. So let's, for a return engagement, part two, I call it, let's now turn it over to Rita Arjun Auerbach. Rita, take it away. Hello, I'm uh, recording to you from Florida and um, it happens to be pollen season. So there's a lot of allergies going on, on around here in Florida. But I'm going to show you two bodies of work simultaneously. Over the last 40 to 50 years, I have painted extensively my hometown of Buffalo and my summer residence of Chautauqua. And it's always and mainly architecture. Architecture is my first and foremost favorite subject matter. So let's begin. First of all, you're going to see on the left side, my Buffalo images and on the right side, my Chautauqua images. And it's kind of interesting that I found that I have a similar uh, comparative subjects in both cities. So on the left, you see our classic lighthouse entry into the um, area of Buffalo and the waterfront. And on the right is the Chautauqua Bell Tower, which is the uh, symbol of um, the entry, let's say, to the Chautauqua Institution. Buffalo has a waterfront of buildings and boats and amazingly similar. On the right, Chautauqua has a waterfront of a few buildings and lots of sailboats. It's a sailing lake for sure. Buffalo has the uh, power, I call this one the power and glory, um, looking at City Hall and the statue of uh, Soldiers and Sailors Monument. And on the right, we have the, um, the building to the right is the colonnade, which is the power or the administration building of Buffalo. And the, the, the um, sculpture is the Bester Plaza Fountain. As you can see, Buffalo has this glorious cathedral, the Ladies of Our Lady of Victory, 
and Chicago has a charming little chapel of good, the Chapel of the Good Shepherd. It's the Episcopal Chapel. Um, the Catholic congregation uses it for services as well. This is kind of switched, but um, yes, they're switched. Um, so take a better look. Actually, what we're seeing here on the left is a typical architecture of Chautauqua. And on Buffalo, we have our glorious um, Frank Lloyd Wright, which is a, a symbol of one of the outstanding architects whose work is represented in our city. On the left, we have the um, Richardson Tower. It's called Towering in, in the Night, and it has been turned into a hotel. On the right, we have the Athenaeum Hotel at night, um, classic and a symbol of the city of Chautauqua, or I should say the institution. <laughs> Buffalo has Klein Hands Music Hall, where the Chautauqua or the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra uh, has its home and, and a series of performances, whereas on the right, we have the Norton Hall that um, houses our operas and other events of musical quality. <laughs> Clubs on the left, the Buffalo Club, which is well known, that beautiful structure on Delaware Avenue. And on the right, Chautauqua has the women's um, the Women's Clubhouse. It's called Chautauqua Women's Club. These are both private clubs in a way, but are open to membership. Um, I'm certain, I know that the Women's Club in Chautauqua loves having men members. And I know the Buffalo Club is more than happy to have women members. <laughs> On the left, we have at night the um, Erie County um, Community College. It was a former post office. It's where education um, lessons are uh, offered. And on the right, the Hall of Philosophy, where Chautauqua offers lectures, sermons, and um, many, many talks of interest and um, of educational quality. The new Gunlock building at the Buffalo AKG Museum on the left is um, an outstanding new addition to our art community. And on the right, we have Kellogg Hall, which is a tall um, building on the right. I call it uh, Art After Hours in both cases, nighttime in the in the museums of interest. So on the left, we have sort of a classic downtown um, street scene in Buffalo. This is uh, Genesee Street, including the electric tower, the Gold Dome Bank, and a few other of the important um, downtown buildings, busy, busy street. Chautauqua on the right is the around the plaza. This is the brick walk where um, it's usually loaded with people coming and going to classes or lectures or restaurants. Another downtown scene in Buffalo on the left is um, my interpretation of a scene that actually Charles Birchfield painted and the buildings of the electric tower and the building on the, um, on the right side, all of these have been included in a Birchfield painting that uh, was done by the artist many years ago. And I sat there and replicated my interpretation of that street scene. And on the right, we have the scene 
of um, activity similar, uh, people moving toward the middle of the image, which is the amphitheater where lectures, concerts, um, all sorts of exciting events, even ballet and opera occur there. It's kind of interesting that I was able to find in my long years of repertoire, interesting buildings that show both sides of um, my favorite cities that I love to paint in. So um, can you bring that up a little tighter? Sure. But there you go. Anyway, on the left, you can see um, the church, I believe, is uh, the Episcopal Cathedral. And um, the, um, let's see, that's a Prudential building where um, just a lot of activity of people coming and going and doing their thing. And on the right, we have the Hall of Philosophy. Again, people are being painting together for a lecture or a workshop or some kind of educational growth. <laughs> on the left is something of a typical setting in Buffalo that's looking down Chippewa Street from Delaware. Um, very much classical um, setting that anyone would see if they were downtown Buffalo and on the right. That's the classic kind of setting in Chautauqua. A porch with wicker chairs, some flowers, um, relaxing. It's always, you know, having tea or drinks on the porch. That's a classic Chautauqua setting. <laughs> On the left, we have the Richardson Towers, which is, um, I would say, one of the most important uh, buildings done by H.H. Uh, Richardson, one of the leading American architects. And, and um, it is a Buffalo highlight and a destination. And on the right is my choice of, of a favorite Chautauqua cottage. Um, this uh, actual painting is in the permanent collection at the Birchfield Penny Art Center. And snow, yes, Buffalo has snow. And on the left, you can see this is a scene along um, Franklin. Franklin and um, I don't know, I think the building on the left would have been the Dana Tulu building, house, home. Um, on the right, we have Chautauqua in the winter. Same winters, probably heavier winter in Chautauqua than in Buffalo because of that sweeping change of um, um, somehow the winds and the rains and the whatever leave Chautauqua with much more snow than Buffalo. Of course, this year, forget it, nothing. And then back again to the symbolic um, entry welcoming towers. Uh, we have Buffalo again, our lighthouse on the left. And there's a classic Chautauqua scene on the right with the bell tower that is um, synonymous with all imagery in Chautauqua. And that's just a glimpse on my night series. And that's pretty much um, what I wanted to show you in terms of my architectural interpretations of the two places I have done the largest bodies of work over the last almost 50 years. So um, I'll just turn it over to Dennis if you have some questions or comments to make. I certainly do, Rita. And uh, what a beautiful job you've given uh, us a dessert for our eyes here in Buffalo uh, and Chautauqua and uh, are the epitome of what this program is about, really, it's uh, part of an exploration of what I called at the beginning, the Buffalo Chautauqua idea. And uh, 
to use an art term often used anyways uh, um, in describing art is the juxtaposition of two paintings side by side is a wonderful, wonderful uh, piece for us today and now archived on the library's YouTube channel. So uh, Rita, I'm gonna ask you a, a, a way back question. Uh, what age were you? What When you first said, you know, I think I'm going to go down the path of becoming an artist. Uh, is that young? Is that in college? Is it post-college? Well, actually, um, I must have been 10 or 12 and shared a bedroom with my sister who was two years younger. And um, we just uh, started to make little doodles uh, on our bedroom wall, um, you know, kind of hiding them behind furniture. And um, we just sort of challenged each other and made, you know, goofy little doodles. And one day our mother um, gathered us together and said, I see those little doodles on your bedroom walls. And I, I've discovered them. And girls, you don't have to sneak around. You can do whatever you want on your bedroom walls. They're yeah. your walls. Go for it. So that was like giving us permission to make art. And um, so I was like 10, 12, I'm not sure. But it certainly made the difference. And away we went covered our walls, and we both ended up um, going to Buffalo State College for art. Um, I taught art for 20 years. My sister uh, moved to Baltimore. She taught for a while. But um, we both really felt that um, this is something that we could do. And of course, the guidance counselors told us in high school, back in those days, that women could be teacher, secretary, nurse, and the other two did not appeal. So I went to Buff State and became an art teacher. Great story, Rita. All right, uh, Joy or Allison, do we yep. have- We comments? do. We, we do have a, a few questions um, from our friend, Jerry Mead. What have been some of the most memorable commissions you have done of buildings or private homes in Chautauqua, in the Chautauqua Institutions area? Oh boy. I think I have painted more of the cottages in Chautauqua than, than I can even remember. Um, oh my goodness, I've painted the quaint little cottages, the little tent houses that you saw in one of those slides, as well as the Packard Mansion. Um, commissions. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I've done I've done them all. I've done a ton of houses. Um, sometimes people say, um, "I'm going to take this painting to my home, my winter home," and some people hang it right in the summer Chautauqua home. Um, I love the ones that take it away, so they have. Chautauqua all year long where they live. But um, there's so so many, Jerry, I've done them. Stop asking that question because it's a lot. <laughs> um, the next question, you showed a lot of pictures of downtown Buffalo. Have you ever painted the downtown Central Library or the Lafayette Square um, intersection? Yes, the Lafayette Square <laughs> intersection I did paint. Um, I'll have to think really hard who owns it. Um, one of the largest commission uh, actually in Buffalo that I've ever had was by the um, law firm of Goldberg Segala. They, um, they acquired my Buffalo downtown scene and uh, as a law firm grew, they sent me to other cities to do an architectural montage. And um, these paintings, it has now become 15 of their branches across the country, as well as one in London. And I painted all of those cities into a montage for each one. Uh, some I visited, some I had to use the internet for references. And um, 
the originals are in the corporate office here in Buffalo. Uh, they're located on Main Street. And prints have been made of all of them that are now in all of the 15 or more offices across the country. Okay, um, next question from the Millers. Do you paint outdoors or take reference photographs to work from? And I, which I, painting that you share today is your favorite? Um, as far as the um, a painting, uh, many paintings I do on site as much as I can. I feel on site is the best way for me to really feel and understand the setting, the noise, the sounds, the smells, the sky. Um, that is the most perfect way. Sometimes, as you saw in the Buffalo scenes, it's not really possible to sit in the middle of the street and do that. So I try to make as many reference photos as I can and then um, combine them back in my studio to uh, make a pleasing composition that represents what I'm looking at. And um, I would say every painting that ends up in a frame or is sold is my favorite. <laughs> and um, where, you mentioned you have a piece in Birchfield. Where can Western New Yorkers see some of your other works that are not, that are not in, um, private private homes um, um yes the yeah. Birch, well but the Birchfield penny has about um eight or ten of my paintings in their permanent collection and they're stored away in archives i suppose by calling ahead and making an appointment they would take you into the archives possibly and see them or definitely on their website. Go to the website, look up my name, and um, you will see all of those. Meanwhile, in Buffalo, uh, Grace Maibaum in East Aurora has a great selection of my pieces, a, a large selection, actually. She's the one. Um, Mainframe has some of my Buffalo prints, but um, I would have to refer you mainly to Grace Maibaum. And then someone asked, is there a book? Can anybody buy a book that has um, images or postcards of your, your various works, be it Buffalo or Chautauqua or both? I published a book um, a few years ago, which is now sold out. Um, so I'm going to have to say no, not at this time. It was an excellent book. It was a 40 year survey. Um, so I guess I'm gonna to have to tell you no because I'm not reprinting the book. But you will find the book in the library. Wonderful, thank you. Dennis, that's all the questions we have. Well, uh, great questions, folks. Thanks for, for asking them. Uh, we've got a, a minute or two. Uh, Rita, you just, uh, you did the Gunlock building. Uh, so you're, you're you're just staying with your uh, wonderful trade that you do so well. Uh, uh, how, how many paintings a year do you find yourself doing even now? <laughs> well, I just completed 10 paintings of Chautauqua icons at night, my night series, 10 of them. They're now being framed at mainframe. Um, uh, and they, they have been the last, I just finished the last one a week or so ago, sent it up to Buffalo and they're being framed. They will be available in Chautauqua this summer at the Chautauqua Warehouse, which is a shop on the colonnade. Um, yes, uh, going back to the Gunlock building, I, I'm remiss in saying that is probably one of the very most recent significant commissions and you saw the painting in my um, review of the Gunlock building. The Gunlock family commissioned that painting. And um, yes, it's pretty exciting. It was um, took a lot of research getting the right photographs. I went there day, night, 
different light, um, you know, different times of day to make um, a good enough reference that I could uh, manage to do the building in my studio. So, and, and which always gets me uh, as a docent at the AKG, uh, uh, you look at somebody like Monet and you say, he, he captures something for a moment, but it took him a lot longer than a moment to capture that moment. And uh, you did the same thing with, with that painting to me anyways, of the Gunlock building. How, how do you capture that sunlight or lack of, or, or the clouds, the atmosphere of the moment and, 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 and yet it is just that, a moment uh, that you're capturing. Any comment? Well, people ask me, how long did it take you to make that? Well, I'm saying how long based on the brush on the paper or all the research that I do beforehand, all the sketching, the planning, the composition. I mean, it takes it takes a lifetime of learning and doing and making mistakes and making it better and fixing and changing. That's how long it takes, 50 years. That, that's right up there with which is your famous, uh, your best painting when uh, most people, many artists will say all of them, uh, like my children, all of them. Uh, that's right, that's <laughs> it. Dennis, so Dennis, yep. can I can I add one thing from the library? You know, March is Women's History Month. March is Women's History Month. And Rita, you have uh, made all of us really um, proud that you are from or that you've lived in this area and you have beautiful talents and accomplishments. And happy Women's History Month to you for showing us such beautiful images to start our month. Joy well, Wilson. Th well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure doing it. I certainly second that motion, Joy, thank you. And Rita, thank you very much. Uh, 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 you, well, everything I could have hoped for uh, happened in today's presentation. Uh, you, you've shown the beauty, uh, uh, the art of architecture and Chautauqua's beauty uh, all in one uh, half hour segment here. Uh, and without a book, this will have to do folks <laughs> until you can find one. Uh, keep showing this uh, uh, YouTube presentation when it's uh, uh, posted and share it with your friends. Uh, and we certainly hope you'll join us next week. We're also going to have another part two program. Uh, uh, earlier in February, we had uh, Henry and Brett Swiatek from Swiatek Studios. Uh, and they're going to show us uh, three other churches, exterior, but mainly the interiors uh, that they've worked with uh, and their artistic skills uh, come to life for us here on the Imagine program. So uh, join us then. And until then, I'm Dennis Galecki. Be well and good day.